Welcome to Groundwater Hydrology and Management and PTL course. This is week two, lecture two. In this week, we are looking at the importance of groundwater, both at the international stage and also at the national stage. In the last class, we looked at the volumes of extraction per country. We looked at globally where the groundwater resources are maximum. We looked at the major aquifers or major hydrologic groundwater units, also some complex units where they are and what is the recharge rate. We will continue assessing why and how these groundwater volumes differ by country. This is very important to understand so that we get a sense of what management activities are needed for the groundwater management and conservation. So as we saw in the last class, uh, we'll pick up from the graph made by Professor Shah in 2014, uh, looking at the groundwater extraction rates decadal, that is every 10 years. So we did notice that India has the most um, extracted volume with around 260 kilometer cube per year. And the second rank goes to US around 110. Uh, and uh, China comes third with around 90, uh, 95 kilometer cube per year respectively. And we also saw a very important note that India extracts more if not less than the combination of the next two countries in line, which is combined groundwater use of US and China. We also notice that the Asian countries are ever increasing in groundwater use in China uh, and all the major agricultural economies in Asia. The groundwater use is keeping on increasing with the most steepest increase noted in India, this uh, curve is exponential, whereas others are almost uh, really uh, growing, uh, but every year it is uh, increasing, whereas the Western countries are more or less stabilizing, US, Europe, etc. This clearly shows a shift from the groundwater use uh, and or where they are using most of the world. So it, it is very imperative to understand where the groundwater is mostly used. So we now have an idea of which countries are using it. And by a fair understanding of what the chief uh, economy is driven by in each of these countries, we can assess where the groundwater is being used. Let's have a deeper look at it. So the major use, uh, as we saw, is in the Asian countries. And those Asian countries are also noted as the chief food exporters in the world. They grow a lot of agriculture and they export it to these countries, especially where the groundwater use is almost stabilizing Europe and uh, US, for example. Let's take some data. So, of the world irrigated area, uh, which is around 300,000. I will see the units here. We do have uh, almost uh, of the uh, area irrigated with groundwater is around 37 to 40 percent. So, of the total agriculturally irrigated land, it could be by surface irrigation, it could be by uh, tube well, uh, buying water, etc., etc., dam water. Uh, almost 37.5% is from the groundwater reserve, which is a big number. Okay. So moving on, let's see how the major continents are using water for irrigation. So Africa uses around 18.5% of groundwater total uh, area irrigated. Only 18.5% is under groundwater irrigation. Uh, and uh, when you compare it to the world, it's very small, 2.3%. Uh, 
Okay, so if you remember, I did show you that uh, big, big aquifers with big recharge and good volume are available in Africa. However, it's economically very expensive to take the water out. Therefore, they don't use much of groundwater. They are limited with energy resources, pumping mechanical uh, resources uh, to actually access this water. So it is called economically stress uh, situation. Then we go to the Americas, which is North and South America. Uh, you would see uh, above the world average of 37.5, we have 44% of the total irrigated area under groundwater irrigation. Uh, this shows that uh, most of these uh, regions where irrigation is happening, uh, they are almost 50%, uh, nearly nearing 50%, they tap from groundwater. If you look at what they grow in these countries, it is mostly uh, uh, nuts, horticulture, which is fruits, orchards, etc. And a lot of exports. A lot of water is also used for uh, grass uh, to feed the meat market. Uh, livestock and other things, uh, and then they export the meat. So uh, a lot of their uh, water is used for that. When you compare to the world, it's almost 20% uh, of the groundwater irrigated area. Let's move on to Asia where, as I said, most of the agriculture is happening. So now we're going to understand that um, groundwater uh, is a big um, uh, user uh, in uh, the world in Asian countries. So and that is why you see a lot of volume being extracted. Okay. So if you look at the area under irrigation, irrigation is the application of water for um, crops. Uh, so it is not rain fed, it is the rabi season that we call in India. So it's the non-monsoon season or season where you apply water. And as I said, most of the water is applied by surface water, groundwater, or a combination of both. So in Asia, uh, almost 38 to 40 percent, which is almost near the world average, is taken from groundwater. Okay, so almost uh, the average uh, sinks in. Where it is uh, a bigger, bigger chunk is when you look at the area. So, of the total uh, area irrigated in the world with groundwater, 70 percent happens in Asia. And that is why you see India's groundwater extraction high. China, uh, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, all these Asian countries pumping a lot of groundwater. So even though the percentage of total area is small, uh, because these are agrarian nations, which means a lot of agricultural activity is happening. Uh, and because of that, most of the water is supplied by surface water structures, uh, whereas the Rabi season and the non-monsoon season is supplied by groundwater. So 38% of the total, however, of the groundwater use uh, area in the world, 70 to 71% is from Asia. So Asian regions are combinedly the most extracting regions for groundwater in the world. And when you go to Europe, um, the irrigation is very small. Look at the area size. Uh, it's almost uh, that of Africa, so which means not much uh, irrigation happens. Um, very less agricultural productivity uh, and uh, of that even lesser is for groundwater irrigation so only 32.4 percent uh, much uh, lower than the world average uh, and uh, of the world area only six to seven percent uh, is under groundwater irrigation in europe so the pumps and all the technologies they use may not be applicable uh, for Asian countries. So please understand this. Yes, there are a lot of technologies available in Europe and Western countries, but the system here is totally different. The volumes we extract are totally different, much, much higher. So we need better engineering and natural solutions to manage groundwater. Then you come to Oceania, where it's very, very negligible. So if you just look at the major continents, uh, as I said, Asia has been uh, the chief producer of agricultural products um, uh, and especially your more water intensive crops like sugarcane, rice, vegetables, fruits, etc. Um, and they are exported. Okay? So you export these products out uh, for a very low amount of money. So this data clearly shows where the food is mostly produced uh, and how it is also shifted to these other countries uh, for a very less uh, price. And so you are exporting your groundwater 
uh, uh, for a very, very less price. So most importantly, without the price concept, if you look at it, uh, it is very important to understand that uh, most of the groundwater irrigation happens in Asia. Uh, and also on top of that, so above and beyond that, uh, around 62% of uh, the irrigation is by surface water. So please do not disconnect surface water and groundwater because uh, surface water leads to groundwater. So that we'll discuss in the physical hydrology section. So moving on, uh, we'll take a look at the groundwater socioecologies in agriculture, which means now we know that where the irrigation is happening, where how much groundwater resources are being used. Uh, let's see what they use it for. I was giving examples like rice, sugarcane, uh, based on uh, my reading and experiences uh, in these countries. Uh, but it is also important to see what data shows. So the yellow region is the arid agrarian system, which is uh, very uh, less water. And based on that, there are some agrarian uh, systems example some some uh, vegetables fruits dates palm all those things so you see uh, middle eastern countries are uh, occupying that then the groundwater where it is used for industrial agriculture so industrial agriculture includes mass farming like uh, acres and acres of land uh, managed by one well or a big massive well uh, and then also uh, industrial agriculture includes livestock uh, uh, rearing at an industrial scale so there's a lot of these countries so if you look at that uh, europe and your uh, US and Australia uh, come under the industrial agricultural category. Uh, and they are mostly the well developed countries. So they are very uh, uh, developed nations and they use the water very wisely, um, thereby conserving water and using it for more industrial uh, and profit. Uh, so industrial activities and profit. Okay, so you can see South Africa comes under that and all these European nations and Australia, US come under that. Um, then we go to the small uh, uh, land holder intensive agriculture. So this is where the chunk of Australia comes, uh, I'm sorry, Asia comes. If you look at uh, most of Asian uh, countries uh, are agrarian in nature, are dependent on agriculture uh, and their small land holding size. China's data is not available to compare that uh, very clearly. However, if you look at India, uh, you have uh, the average land holding size uh, approximately at one hectare. So these are very small land holding uh, units and a lot of agriculture activity, intensive agriculture. So here is where groundwater is being extracted at unsustainable rates across Asian uh, countries. Okay. So, uh, and also uh, the uh, northern part of Africa and Mexico. So, uh, these are the places where groundwater uh, management is needed uh, and or there is no collective use. There's no options for collective use because they are isolated as small land holders and there are more and more uh, management needed. Then we get into the extensive agro pastoralism. So this is the um, uh, face or this is the uh, vertical where you see more uh, agriculture is for rearing livestock and those kind of activities. As I said, meat industry um, and then poultry industry, chicken feed, all those things. So there is agriculture happening and there is groundwater use for that agriculture, but the product is not mostly for human consumption, but for livestock, cattle, uh, other types of uh, you know, meat uh, industries like chicken and other things where uh, it is converted to one form to the other and that meat is being exported to uh, countries uh, as a product so you always see uh, meat coming from brazil and other things so um, here is where extensive agro pastoralism happens uh, and the groundwater use is that so roughly you get an idea where most of the groundwater activities are, which are the red zones, uh, and it is intensive agriculture for food. So rice, sugar cane, crops, etc. Whereas your agro-pastoralism is for grass, for example, um, which may not uh, consume as much as water as sugar cane and rice. So, uh, and then we get into the industrial phase. So we do have now a good spread of countries uh, and fortunately or unfortunately, if you draw a line between the red and the uh, orange countries, you see that the red countries are mostly the 
underdeveloped developing poor nations like nepal is there uh, for um, uh, lower economies um, uh, pakistan afghanistan iran all those countries are there and india is there as a developing nation um, along with china as a developed nation so all these nations are cornered in the small intensive agriculture for groundwater whereas the developed nations including australia uh, us and european countries use it for excuse me, industrial uh, agriculture so there's a big difference in what uh, we uh, see moving on we can also see countries where groundwater use is not significant including russia canada uh, and all those uh, cold countries finland etc so here groundwater use is negligible uh, for agriculture and that is very clearly understood uh, with what they do so groundwater in canada is, is is very less maybe for industrial it is not for industrial agriculture so where does the food come from these countries it comes from most of the asian countries so here's where most of the virtual water fruit uh, print and also the water export happens so now we have a good uh, idea of which are the countries that are uh, uh, using more groundwater and what are they using it for? They are using it for agriculture, uh, and are they using it for high uh, cost agriculture or industrial very smart agriculture? These things have been discussed in these chapters. So the quick question is: If we continue like this, then the developed nations will always be developed and rich, whereas the poor nations will be using more water for a very low profit, and they will they will never make good profit and or become developed nations in terms of agriculture it's very difficult uh, because the groundwater resources coming down so that is what the core of this course is we are aiming to uh, manage groundwater properly uh, so that it is more sustainably used in the future um, so given that groundwater has become a very very uh, important uh, aspect in the asian countries it's important to see uh, the structure of groundwater economies and okay, so uh, here's where you see uh, the annual groundwater use in, by different data. So 2014, uh, Professor Shah's uh, data from different resources. You see China using 105 kilometer cube per year, per year uh, annual groundwater extraction or use. Uh, the good uh, part of this uh, table is it shows you how many wells are they using for extracting that much of volume of water okay uh, and abstraction per well so if you have one well uh, how much water on average do they extract and then what is the proportion of population using the groundwater so if you look at china 4.5 million wells are there um, there will be more now uh, and uh, the abstraction is 23000 uh, cubic meters per year per well okay so what does this tell you is uh, the number of wells spread across the country and also what are the techniques, technologies that they use and the size of the land that they irrigate from one well. So look at 23,000 cubic meters per year. Uh, that's a good fair amount of land that can be irrigated. We jump down to India, uh, where India is a major user of groundwater, 230 kilometer cube per year. Uh, these numbers would differ. Uh, varying on the reports that you see or the studies you see. Uh, so for the actual uh, values, you, I, I recommend you to look at the Central Groundwater Board data, where it parks it around 265 to 60 kilometer cube per year. So here in India, the second uh, row, you see 20 million wells, more than five times the wells in China. Look at the size of China, look at the size of India and 11,500 cubic meter per year per well. So that also gives you an idea of what is the land size that is used for one well. So is it economical? Look at the energy that they put in a well, uh, how much extraction goes, how much wastage goes, all these things. So it is clear that um, uh, most of uh, the population is uh, consuming groundwater, look at 55 to 60%. Uh, and most importantly, they individually use it it's not like collective use 20 million wells compared to 4.5 million wells in china uh, and the amount of water that is extracted per well clearly shows that 
is more localized use of groundwater rather than sharing or mass farming, mass use of groundwater. So this causes multiple, multiple wells to be installed. Just think about it, you uh, have a land uh, and your, your uh, neighbor has a land. Instead of having one well for both the lands, just adjacent to each other, two lands are together. Instead of having one well in between for both, uh, you will have one farmer having one well, the other farmer having another well. So this is how wells multiply in India. And uh, the cost is uh, expensive because to drill a well, one well is almost the same uh, depending on uh, the location. Uh, so instead of uh, drilling one well uh, with a particular depth, now you're drilling two wells and uh, that is expensive. Uh, the water is also being used very uh, inefficiently. Energy is lost in pumping, those kind of things. Let's compare it to other uh, lower user countries like Iran, Mexico, and Pakistan. You have uh, almost uh, 0 0.5 uh, million wells uh, and 0 0.09 uh, uh, million wells in Mexico. And if you look at Mexico's groundwater extraction per well, it's humongous, 414,000 uh, meter cube per year, which means they have bigger wells and bigger uh, abstraction wells. Um, and that is used for industrial scale because uh, you take it uh, and or give it to uh, consumption units like cities, uh, domestic use units. So it is uh, good to understand from this um, a table that um, uh, countries use groundwater uh, but most importantly, are they isolating it by different partners? Uh, and are there too many wells, those kind of things, energy laws, what is the population using it? Come to Pakistan's part of Punjab, uh, and you could see uh, around 45 uh, cubic uh, meters, uh, kilogram, uh, uh, kilometer cube of water is used uh, with 0.5 million wells, 90,000 uh, meter cube per year, which is uh, much, much higher than India. Uh, in terms of per well abstraction uh, and 60 to 65, so more percentage of uh, people are dependent on this and on water. Uh, so a lot of uh, water is being extracted by very, very less amount of uh, wells. Okay, so this, this also uh, looks at uh, maybe sharing of groundwater or a central agency which is pumping the water and distributing to uh, other regions. Okay, come down to US, which is uh, 198 uh, kilometer cube per year, according to this report. Uh, but the number of wells they have is very, very small. Uh, if you uh, know, most of the groundwater wells in US have to be permitted uh, by the government. You have to declare uh, and they monitor it. Every, every well is almost monitored. So you do have good data. Uh, and uh, those are massive, massive wells. If you look at the pumps, those are industrial pumps, uh, which uh, pump a lot of volume of water uh, and cater to large pieces of land, not one hectare. Uh, so it's big, big lands and mass farming happens. So uh, you don't need that many wells and you have an industrial agricultural system as we saw in this uh, image. Uh, so mostly it is used for industry. The population which is dependent or using it is only less uh, than 2%. So uh, this gives a clear idea. This um, image gives a clear idea of uh, how the water is used, where the water is used, um, and uh, the number of wells spread across the countries and um, a well abstraction. It gives you a, a, a very short um, uh, experience on if the well is or used uh, individually um, and other countries how they use it compared to India. So what are the specific crops? It's a very, very uh, important slide uh, which uh, is done by um, in study by Dalin et al. in 2017, uh, mapping the uh, major groundwater users in the world. So all these countries that you see, the groundwater countries, not all the countries are mapped here only. Uh, some countries are and the size of your pie chart uh, gives you the size of the water extracted. So if it is circle, it is above 30 kilometer cube per year. So you know that India, uh, Pakistan, China, US are all above uh, 30 kilometer cube. So they have a bigger circle. Um, and also they map the key crops that they grow. So I've been telling you where the water is used, how many wells they use, and uh, how many wells uh, 
uh, per million are used in the country and per well extraction rate. Now let's see what crops they grow, most of the crops using groundwater. So you see that uh, the uh, chief uh, or, the, or the key uh, highly ranked uh, India in ground of use, uh, you see more uh, wheat and rice uh, uh, being used by groundwater irrigation. So wheat and rice are used more, uh, followed by sugarcane. All these are uh, highly water intensive crops. Uh, and then you have cotton, another uh, good water intensive crop, uh, followed by other, which is very uh, uh, diverse. It depends on where you are in India. It could be millets, it could be um, uh, turmeric, uh, chilies, horticulture, anything you, you could name it because it's very diverse. Okay. Um, so you have a lot of other uh, uh, agencies here. But when you go to your uh, China, uh, you see that more of the uh, groundwater used for rice. Uh, and because they're a rice eating nation when compared to wheat, India has almost half and half rice and half wheat. So China has a lot of uh, rice uh, plus maize. So maize is used a lot and groundwater is being shared for all these. Cotton very less, come to uh, comparatively less. If you come to US, which is the next ranked uh, groundwater extractor, you could see a total change. Now more pink color is there uh, for fodder. Fodder is the grass that the cows and livestock eat. As I said, they are industrial groundwater users. They uh, use it for meat industry uh, rather than uh, crops and then rice and those kind of things. So rice is very less. Uh, so after fodder, it goes to other, which is including horticulture nuts, like almonds and stuff that you get from US, even in Indian market. Uh, and then you have uh, maize. Uh, so maize, uh, corn, they use a lot for sugar and also ethanol. Uh, then you have uh, Australia is very less compared to other parts of uh, the world. Uh, Mexico has uh, a lot of other crops. So it gives you a very clear understanding of where the groundwater is used. What are the key crops that they grew to um, uh, to sustain this groundwater use and activity, uh, and um, uh, are they diversifying their crops? So if you look at China and India, uh, there's not much diversification. Uh, more rice uh, means more groundwater use, uh, same as wheat. So wheat and rice uh, also are uh, having uh, equal proportions in India uh, when it comes to consumption. So North India it has a lot of wheat, whereas South, uh, they have a lot of rice. Okay, so these are typical crops that are uh, grown using groundwater. So now we have an idea of, uh, can you do something? Can you do something for uh, changing this behavior? If you take a step back and answer this question, is it uh, that easy to change a dietary preference by these nations? Let's take China. Can you change their rice eating habits? It's really going to be very difficult. Same as uh, India. So if you go to India South, you cannot quickly change them to another diet uh, and or the north from wheat to something else, uh, less water intensive crops, so for example, maize um, uh, or millets. So uh, this is where the groundwater uh, demand and supply uh, scenarios have to be discussed. And this study clearly shows you where these uh, major economies are uh, in using groundwater and uh, how much do they use uh, in terms of groundwater volume is it by range above the 30 kilometer cube to less than one kilometer cube and what are the key specific crops that they grow the other question to answer in these key countries uh, in extracting ground water is do they need that much do they need that much productivity because at the most of the uh, time you start exporting uh, but is the export water also added into it Okay, so you're exporting rice from India to uh, the Western countries or from China to Western countries. How much are you calculating the groundwater is the question. Uh, because it is an unseeable uh, quantity. Uh, you cannot put a value for groundwater. And that is the problem for groundwater management. Whereas the other countries, the Western and Europe countries, uh, they have clearly understood the value of groundwater and using it for a high profit. So one kilogram of meat is much more expensive than one kilogram of rice. If you look at the comparisons, 
Um, uh, same goes to maize and other things that they grow. So uh, it, it has to be used to communicate some important decisions to the policymakers uh, and farmers in India. How do you conserve groundwater and what can be done to change the attitude of groundwater use in India? We'll see more of this uh, in the next lecture um, because such uh, use of groundwater is very unsustainable. I've been using this for a long time, but what water are you using is a question. Are you using the annual rechargeable water? Not uh, exactly. Are you using water from 10 years, 100 years ago? Yes. And that is what we will discuss in the uh, principles of groundwater and occurrences of groundwater, etc. Okay. So if this habit goes on where you uh, use groundwater for mostly highly water intensive crops, it is very unsustainable uh, and more likely the groundwater system is going to be under tremendous stress uh, and the agriculture system may collapse. So it is very important to understand uh, groundwater use in these countries. Uh, with this, uh, I just uh, will introduce the water stress uh, and which we'll be discussing more in detail in the next class. Uh, but just if you look at the previous image and uh, where the major groundwater use and what grow, and uh, the study by WRI on the stress uh, indicators and, and countries where water stress and groundwater are going to be, it almost matches. For example, India, uh, the highest groundwater extractor, is also showing a high water stress index to China and other countries. Similarly, wherever the groundwater is extracted, you're going to see a lot of water stress. Even in the US, in some regions where groundwater is highly extracted, is going to be under tremendous stress. So we'll discuss this in detail in the next class.